everyone, and welcome to the Game Cola Podcast. My name is Paul Franzen. I am the founder and editor-in-chief of GameCola.net, and with me today are uh, various other writers for the site. We have Christian Porter, Justin Lushinsky, hey. and Alex Jedge-something. The Jetty. The Jetty. Uh, everyone, oh, I guess you just did introduce yourselves. Well, well go around again and uh, tell us what you all do for the website. All right, I'm Christian Porter, and I do little to nothing. I'm uh, Justin Lashinsky. I write reviews on old PS2 games and game mods. I'm Alex Jedrzak, and I uh, normally I do the podcast, but uh, Paul has taken over today. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, no. Okay. You've uh, been usurped, Jay- Alex. <laughs> it happens. All right, uh, before we get started, I have, a, I have a quick note for our listeners at home about the format of tonight's show. Uh, for the last several episodes, you may have noticed we've basically just picked one big topic and then kind of talked it to death over the course of an hour. Even if we knew nothing about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we're trying something different this time. Um, I've asked everyone who's participating today to bring uh, one or two topics that they personally would like to talk about. And uh, we're just going to go around the room, as it were, and uh, talk about them uh, in turn until we have uh, what is roughly a podcast. So that's the plan. It's going to be awesome. Yay. But before uh, but before we get started on that, Jetty. What? Do oh. we have any listener feedback from the last episode? Paul, we do. We do? Surprisingly, yes. Oh. Apparently, someone posted this to YouTube, and uh, we got a number of replies, mostly from one person, but we did get uh, multiple replies, and then someone else actually commented on the article. Wow. Has that ever happened before? Has anyone ever commented on an article on GameCola.net? I don't believe so. Not not people no. who aren't writers already for the site. <laughs> That's true. But yes, let me see. Let me take a look at this list. Uh, Sax Dude Molloy on uh, YouTube gave us the comment, Big system seller for 3DS should be a port of the original Super Smash Brothers. What do you guys think? Because remember, last time was uh, all about 3D games, and we were talking about the 3DS, and uh, will it actually have any games? They're saying they should uh, port Super Smash Brothers to 3DS. The very first, like, 64 one? That seems to be what he's saying. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I think, uh, because the... The DS has, like, uh, Wi-Fi multiplayer stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. So I think, I think even, you know, ignoring the, the 3D part, having uh, Wi-Fi multiplayer for Super Smash Brothers would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Not, or not even sure if it the... wasn't just a full remake, even if it was just its own, uh, they made its own little Smash Brothers, that would be fun. Maybe just a 2D one, because I'm not sure. Uh, the 3DS, mm, does it have a, a control, a, a stick, or does it still use the D-pad? It does that's have what a stick. I, that's okay. what I was going to say now. I mean, that might be cool, though, if they could figure out a way to work the, uh, whatever that thing is called, the stick thing, uh, into Super Smash Brothers, so that you somehow control the character using that. Mm-hmm. Could be good, could be annoying. Mm-hmm. What kind, what kind of 3D effects would a Smash Brothers game have? Because it's it's very very much a 2D game. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. And maybe why, they, why maybe would, they just yeah. wouldn't bother with it. I mean, the 3D effects, well, as we discussed would... before, the 3D effects in the game uh, and for the 3DS games probably aren't going to be too essential because you can turn them off. So, yeah. I mean, maybe they maybe they will just make games where they don't bother with the 3D effects, like they make Wii games that don't bother with motion controls. Hmm. Yeah, but maybe. I I mean they would probably. Work it in a gimmicky, you know, effects and stuff would be like, whoa, <laughs> coming out at you. That's ridiculous. I've never seen Nintendo do a gimmicky thing in their life. Yeah, it's true. Where, where would you get that idea? I refuse to believe that. Yeah. Anyway, then we have uh, four comments from Riziman33 on YouTube. Uh, number one, this podcast got boring at the beginning, then it got funnier at the end. I disagree. Uh, it was boring the whole way through. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was going to say, is, uh, I didn't know that listeners actually listened to the whole podcast. <laughs> I will give them credit for that. Well, I, yeah. did, I did notice that our YouTube video version of the podcast, the, the first video 
always has like five or six times as many views as all of the rest. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not sure what I like what that says about the podcast. <laughs> they really like the theme song. Thank you, Mateo. Uh, okay, his second comment is, where's Michael Gray? Now, actually, Michael Gray was in that podcast. He was. I He said like two things, didn't he? Two or three things? Yes, two or three things. Uh, also, although sadly you can't quite tell, but Colin was also in the podcast, except that he sounds incredibly similar in the few words that he said to Christian Porter. So I, I did notice that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take full credit as long as it was good. <laughs> but yes. Uh, but how, wait, how did uh, Michael and Colin appear in the last podcast? Because they weren't there in the room with us. Well, I guess yeah, none of us are in the yes. room together, but... Yes, they were, Paul. They were? Yes, oh, they were. okay. They were there. <laughs> yes, Michael Gray was in the last podcast. Then he said, can you do walkthroughs for Phoenix Wright 3 and Apollo Justice? Now, I'm confused by this because I did not know that uh, Game Cola covered Phoenix Wright. I thought it was just kind of unspoken that that's a game we don't touch around here. We're just not interested. You guys are not going to trick me with your sarcasm this time. I'm not falling for that <laughs> trap again. Uh, I think that is probably a yes, but uh, not because you said so, but because we're going to do it eventually anyway. Eventually, uh, though, um, for all of our YouTube well, fans out there, I think Michael Gray is taking a bit of a hiatus from uh, those videos. Though, uh, that said, just yesterday, me and Michael did record a different video walkthrough for the YouTube page. that will be coming shortly. We played. Uh -oh. Yeah, we didn't play through a Phoenix Wright game. We played through a classic uh, Sierra adventure game called The Adventures of Willie Beamish. So look forward to, to that. Yikes! Ooh, I, I remember the review for that a while back. <laughs> and then uh, one final comment from Rizaman33: You're fired. Now I'm not sure what my fired has to do with this, or what he was uh, responding to, but uh, he did say you're fired. So thanks, Riz Man, for all your uh, input. Maybe it's a reference to pottery. <laughs> Moving on to the next one, our actual comment on the actual site from an actual reader. Goodness. Yeah, this, this one's kind of cool because this could also be like our first discussion topic for, for today's show. It's true. West Twisp says, Can you give me some advice not to be made fun of at school when mentioning video games like that no person at my school knows about, like Mega Man, Phoenix Wright, or when mentioning Game Cola and watching videos and reading reviews, please. So, uh, I'm assuming that this person is in high school, and none of their friends like video games, and uh, they want to know how to bring up video games with their friends without being made fun of. Is that hmm. possible? Hmm. I mean, because I, I remember when I was in high school, I didn't have any friends who played video games. You know, I'm actually surprised that would be uh, as much an issue now as it was when, uh, when you know, we were all high school age. I, I figured video games are a little more popular now than they were then. Yeah. And, like, I, I feel like when I was little, video games was much, much more dorky and, and not something that everyone did. Whereas now, you know, everyone has their DS whatevers, yeah. their DS lights and yeah. their Wii's and, and whatnot. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I don't remember, like, when I was in high school, it wasn't that long ago. But, I mean, I don't remember it being super unpopular unless you, you know... But most people played at least, you know, like, one video game at the time, so it wasn't too bad. As long as you don't, like, as long as it's not the only thing you talk about, I don't think anybody should really care. But then it's not very good if none of them play video games. You're like, hey, how about that Mega Man game or something? They're like, what now? Does that or happen? even worse, how about that Phoenix Wright? You know, that one, that awesome game where you play as a lawyer? That's awesome. <laughs> you know, it's a lawyer it's cool, right? sim? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know that. I watched football yesterday. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, so maybe this person is just talking with the wrong people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but I also grew up in a relatively uh, populated area where I had a variety of people I could talk to. So, like, if I didn't get along with some people, I could go talk to others. But perhaps this person lives somewhere where they don't have a lot of options and they're kind of stuck trying to, yes. Did you watch football last night? No, I watched wrestling. Oh, I played Mega Man. <laughs> oh, I guess the answer is just to comment on Game Cola, and we will talk to you about video games. Yeah, yeah, we'll be your friends. Yeah. Don't worry about everybody else. We're all you need. 
join Game. us. Join us. <laughs> yes. Welcome, Welcome to the wise. internet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. If, I guess if I had to say something seriously, it's it's video games are not as especially nowadays. Video games are not as secluded of a hobby as they were back then. I mean, you know, if they like football, sit down and watch football with them, and then you know when they get bored, bust out Guitar Hero. You know, everybody loves to you know, play some ACDC or play some. You know, Detroit Rock City, so there's a connection you can make there. I guess that's also a good point, is that uh, video games, there's more of a variety, and it's not just like, oh, you know, that there Mario. Uh, You know, you can find something that they might like, so while they might not be into Phoenix Wright, you may be able to edge them in by, you know, introducing them to Halo or something. Yeah, Actually, Mario, Mario would actually be a really good choice for that, the new one on the Wii. Okay. That is that is fantastic multiplayer action. <laughs> it is just make sure none of you press A. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> oh, that new right. Super Mario don't. Brothers. Yes. Yeah. Oh no. We talked about it a little uh, last last episode. Yeah. Yeah. I gave up on that after like five <laughs> minutes, and we were like, let's oh, never play it again it's, together. It's wonderful. Uh, Lizzo and I are now actually going. We we beat it, and now we're going back and trying to get all the all the star coins. Then you two are truly a strong couple that will last yeah. forever. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I played it with played it with my, my girlfriend. Um she didn't talk to me for a while afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Well Lizzo is just she I mean she she knows her way around the gamepad. Where I mean it's only actually now that we're really butting heads at all. Uh we we had very very little difficulty actually getting through the main game, but now that we're going back and trying to do all these fancy moves to uh get all the hidden coins uh, we're we're seeing a lot more circumstances where, for example, I accidentally kill her with a turtle shell, and and she doesn't like that. <laughs> Paul knows how to pick a lady who knows her way around a gamepad. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so um, let's 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 dive in now with our first topic of podcast number thirty-four. Uh, Christian, what do you got for us? Uh, well, basically, two thousand eleven is looking like pretty awesome year in the in the way of games so i was gonna see uh what games everyone's looking forward to this year do they still make games no no i mean hypothetically yeah oh, okay the video game business has been long dead the most recent game i've played is uh shadow of the colossus so <laughs> well it oh, just so wow. happens that they are releasing shadow of the colossus and ico in a double pack remastered in hd this year i think it's this year anyway Wow. Mm. Yeah, actually, I think that's when I'll uh, be checking out. I, I never played uh, Ico back when it came out, so I'm kind of curious to see it now. Uh, see, I didn't play Shadow of the Colossus, oh. so I'm probably <laughs> going to pick that up as well. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb here, um, because I, I'm actually really excited for, um, hopefully, for Duke Nukem Forever. Now that's really? finally, finally coming out, yeah. I heard about that, and I was like, what? But I thought they finally canceled it. Yeah, no, it's it's coming out. It has a release date and everything. The company yeah. that was making it went under, and then some other company bought them up and was like, "Here, let's shove it out now." Yeah, Gearbox so now Software. It's coming up this year. Gearbox yeah. Software, the same guys who made uh, Borderlands. Borderlands. Oh wow. Yeah, so they're putting it out this year. I, yeah, and they're I've a company never, that actually knows what they're doing. Yeah, so. I like Borderlands. I've never been a big fan of uh, Duke Nukem though. Uh, so it's... I. The only reason I'm excited for it is basically because, well, like, it's, it's basically like a big running joke for the longest time. Like, you know, Duke Duke and Forever is going to come out just, you know, in 2012, you know, when the Mayan calendar uh, yeah. predicts the death of the world. And actually, and, and I was one of the people at the time who was basically like, all right, let's just let's forget about Duke Nukem. Let's stop. Stop developing it. Just please, for the love of God, just forget about it. Move on with your lives. And now that I'm actually seeing trailers for it, like... I'm super excited. I can't lie. I, I have to go back on myself because it's just <laughs> looks hilarious. So I haven't seen many of the trailers, so maybe it's maybe it's pretty cool. It's, but I, I haven't really looked into it too much. Just that yeah. it's coming out, and that's news the, enough, really. Yeah, the short version is it's basically what you'd expect from a Duke Nukem game. It's it's crass. It's it's bloody. It's 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 you know rude, but it's you know it's Duke Nukem. Yeah. I don't know. For some reason, when I was watching the trailer, I was I was just not feeling his one-liners this time. I don't know why. I'm sure they're exactly as cheesy as they were in Duke Nukem 3D, but they, I just found them a little. I've never for really some cared for his one-liners because they all come from other sources. Yeah, I was gonna say he can't rip off Evil Dead anymore. Yeah. Um, 
don't know. It's a uh, yeah. I, I, I'll probably at least play the demo of it when it comes out, just because it's due yeah. yeah, forever. Just so I can t- say I touched the vaporware. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That's um coming out May third. Yep. I just looked yeah. it up. I uh. So we can all look forward to that. When I heard that, my my friend who told me that it was coming out was like, yeah, it's coming out in like March or April or May, and I was like, is it coming out April first? Because <laughs> I think you've oh. been had. Yes. I know that would have been a, that would have been hilarious, but you know that would have been awesome <laughs> just release on April first. But no, I think it would have been best if they actually said April first and then did release it April first. <laughs> or it would have been awesome if they released it on April first and when you bought the game and put it in your system, it was Duke Nukem one. But once you beat the game, it immediately goes back to the first level, and they can say that's where the forever comes from. Uh, I get it. Uh, are, are we actually sure that's not what they're doing? Nope. <laughs> yeah, totally. We'll like, see. Where does the forever come from? We'll see. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> One game that I'm looking forward to, and I, I know Christian is as well, uh, this actually might be out by the time this podcast is posted, but uh, there's a new You Don't Know Jack game yep. coming out next week. I'm super excited for it, because I've been waiting, like, a decade for the next one. <laughs> I think it'll just be cool, because, I mean, I've been playing the old one, like, I, th- I mentioned this somewhere on the site, I think. I've been playing it, like, like practically on a monthly basis since it came out. So it'll be nice to have some questions that are actually culturally relevant again. Yeah. <laughs> as opposed to, like, 90s trivia or whenever it came out. <laughs> It'll, it's going to be awesome. It is. And this time, the online's actually going to work, rather than, uh, other, unlike Fifth Dementia, which uh, didn't really work that well. Or actually, it probably worked well at the time. Uh, it doesn't work so well now, because all the servers are dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was surprised, very surprised to learn that it was going to be a full retail release, since it, it felt like a download game Yeah, I me. thought for sure that was going to be the case, yeah. but... It's going to be like, I mean, it's not a $60 retail release. It's only going to be 40 bucks, I think, yeah. but I, I was expecting 15 so. Yeah, so that's kind of a bummer, but maybe it means you, there's just more games, so that's good, too. That's true. We should do a group Let's Play of it. That would be I awesome. I agree. <laughs> we all have to figure out what system we're getting it for. Mm-hmm. I hope it doesn't have motion controls on the 360. <laughs> Actually, I guess the PS3 has motion controls for that matter. Oh, or the Wii, <laughs> or the Wii. I don't think is it. Com- I don't think it's coming out for the Wii. It is. Oh, it yep. is. Oh man. And the DS. And the oh. DS. Yeah, it's got a DS? full release. <laughs> uh, so who here hasn't uh, said who they're looking forward to yet? I think somebody hasn't. Uh... Well, I have a giant list of games I'm looking forward to, but rather than rather than choke the podcast, uh, I know LNOR is coming out soon, which I've been really psyched about. Oh yeah, totally. I agree. It looks it looks like it could be really good. I'm just hoping it's not Grand Theft Model T. <laughs> yeah. Because as as much as I liked Red Dead Redemption, it was just Grand Theft Auto again with horses and yeah. sand. Yeah. And tigers. Well, one uh, one preview I read described it as a more mature Phoenix, right? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, it's gonna be an instant classic around here because I'm obsessed. <laughs> oh man! Now now you have sold me. Yeah, everyone's gonna love it here then. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm personally a little burnt on open world games at this point. I actually like. I think I might be the only person in the world who just wants linear adventures now. <laughs> I just like going from point A to point B without having to worry if I missed <laughs> 600 things. But see, this one at least is bringing something new to the table though, because apparently there's a murder and you have to solve it, and apparently Whoa. they don't give you a whole lot, and you just have to go all over the place and find the clues and stuff. Yeah, that that is that is kind of cool. Uh-huh. Instead of so, yeah, I mean like another another uh, like Phoenix Wright games for example, they they kind of really hold your hand throughout the uh, the whole figuring out who did what and how. Yeah. So yeah. You, yeah, you guys are talking about the newest Nancy Nancy Drew game, right? Of course, yeah, of course. Nancy yeah. Drew colon L A Noir. <laughs> but it's supposed to have some like really really wonderful. Uh, Facial animation technology too? Is that what I yeah. heard? Yeah, apparently and they're doing that. Because able, you're supposed like, to be able to examine people's faces. Yeah, to, you're supposed to be able yeah. to see if they're lying or something. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you look at their facial expressions and try to tell if they're lying and see if you can trust them. You go with your gut instinct as a cop. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, just can you, can you go all, you know, like, um, can you go all like Humphrey Borger and just start punching them if they start lying? Yeah, I hope so. Man. 
That's apparently a big All Star cast. Actually, wasn't wasn't there a mode in uh, the new Sam and Max game like that? Yeah, the gritty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The gritty, that was awesome. The no armor mode. That was awesome. <laughs> Uh, I love it too because he literally grows stubble like in the five seconds you don't see him. <laughs> it's, just, it's hilarious. Jetty, what else? What, what's on your list this year? Well, what what games are you looking forward to? Uh, maybe, maybe not games that are coming out this year because I believe you said you you aren't playing any newer games. But yeah, what games are you hoping to play in 2011? <laughs> uh, I think I might play through Front Mission again. Front mission, is that the, yes. the the mecha the mecha game? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I've never heard of that. Hang on. I think they re-released it for the uh, the DS actually a little while ago. Or oh yeah, yeah, I think they did. Actually, uh, considering where I was at the time when I heard the news, it would have been at least like four years ago. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you remember where you were when you heard the news. <laughs> well, like it's like it's when JFK got shot. <laughs> where were you when they released Front Mission for the DS? I was sitting in a coffee shop, and when I heard the news. <laughs> well, no, I was in New York at the time, so. Oh, okay. Yes. A more general, what state was I in? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I uh, I have no clue what's coming out this year, and uh, it's also a DS RPG that I'm I'm I kind of have on my radar. I think it's it's published by Atlas. It's called Radiant Historia. Does anyone hear about that yeah, game? Never heard of it. It's a time travel RPG. I I mean it's get I'm getting strong uh, Chrono Trigger vibes from it, and I I tend to enjoy anything that involves time travel in general. So Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already hit the two main topics of GameCola.net. <laughs> Phoenix Rains right and Back to the Future. Right back. We can call this a show. Uh. Uh, that's on my list. Yeah, that, those are the games I'm looking forward to. Radiant Historia and You Don't Know Jack. And there's also, <laughs> this year is the sequel to GameCola's number one game of all time, Portal. That's true. Right, too. yeah. Oh, man, that is just, that's going to be insane. I hope so, and I know I know Valve usually doesn't doesn't do you wrong. They usually release just quality games. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that's going to be a real uh, to beat a dead word an epic. Yeah, yeah. A it's epic. supposed to have a uh, co-op mode too, right? Yeah, that that looks kind of interesting because like I I like the idea of Portal, but when I when I play it, my mind usually doesn't work well enough. <laughs> For it. So maybe if <laughs> not, you have someone I'm else there helping you. I'm not good at those you. kind of puzzles. I'm much better at wacky item combination puddle, puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> so if I play co-op mode, I can I figure I can play the game with someone who actually knows what they're doing, and I can just make them tell me what to do. Yeah, and if I understand right, I think how it works is one of you get the blue portal, one of you get the orange portal. And I, th- I think that's how it works. Okay. I might be completely uh-huh. wrong. Okay, that would be interesting. I'm, I'm just curious how they're going to make a full-length, full-feature triple a like puzzle game i don't know because i mean portal was fun but i think everybody liked it so much because it was really short you didn't ever get too tired of just you know throwing portals around yeah it left at its peak it didn't yeah. overstay its welcome i don't know i don't oh know God, i don't know if it could overstay it's welcome. Going to also also be short and then they'll just jack up the price of it yeah does yeah, valve really do stuff like that valve doesn't seem like they do stuff no like they're pretty good no. yeah no I think the worst thing they've done recently is the whole the store thing. But even then, that's not that's not really so bad because most of the money is going towards the the people who make items for DF2. So you didn't hear about that? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, no. Okay, the door. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Well, what are you talking about? Well, not too long ago, they um, for the Team Fortress 2, like they have the the update, the class updates. And uh, one of the updates uh, allowed put forward like an online store where you can buy like virtual hats and virtual like weapons and whatnot. It was all really cosmetic. Nothing really improved your game at all. Um, and then there was a big whole thing where oh now they're Valve selling out and whatnot. But most of the money, it, it, it stuff on the store was pretty expensive. Like you can get like an alligator, like a pack of items for like it's like twenty bucks. It is just pixelated items that you can't use anywhere else. So. It was a big deal at the time, but 
most of the money is just going towards the community who built these items, so yeah, it's not so bad. Okay. Anyways. So final thoughts? Any any other quick uh, games we're looking forward to before we can move on to the next topic? Uh, not really. No. I'm a big Oblivion fan. Skyrim is coming yes. out at the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually heard a rumor that that new Zelda game is actually supposed to come out by the end of this year too. Oh yeah, I think yeah, I did hear I that. That a couple days ago. Mm. And also, I read that Silent Hill Eight is coming out, which means I've I've apparently missed five Silent Hills. <laughs> I thought they stopped at three. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be interesting. Uh, Justin, give us our next topic. Uh, well, okay, I. I, w- I was I was gonna first start off with what we're playing, but I, I think we'll if you want we'll if you can talk about that now. But I've got another one if you don't if you want to leave that until like near the end of the podcast. Uh, whichever. I'm, I'm All right. Into whatever. Okay. Uh, well, I was gonna ask what was the um any, I don't know if you guys played uh like what was the last time you guys have felt like immersed into a game like where you're playing a game. Like for so long, and then the, the the lines between reality and fantasy start to blur a little bit. Hmm. You mean where like you play uh, Final Fantasy Tactics for a really long time, and then you go to walk outside, and all you can think is, "Oh, I need to walk this many blocks." Yeah, or like you're playing, you're playing, you're playing like Fallout for so long that you start to see a little bit of like a health meter. Your health meter is low when you haven't eaten for like a couple hours or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, what was the last game or the 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 game that you remember that sort of brought you to that like almost zen like? Well, th- this is sort of related. Um, thanks thanks to games like The Sims, I like still think of things in terms of <laughs> oh, my bladder meter is empty. <laughs> I was just gonna say I think of life kind of in terms of The Sims every now and again. Oh, I actually I'll like, be like oh man, I'm tired, and I'll just picture like a big red bar. I, I frequently think of uh, my social meter, but mine is kind of reverse of The Sims. Like, after I talk to people for a very long time, my, my social meter gets full up, and I and I just don't want to see anyone for, like, a week. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't... I, that's sort of what you were talking about, but not really. Uh, what I have happen more often is just computers in general. I constantly... I will be looking at, like, a book, or I'll be, like, trying to find something in, like, a pile of notes or something, and I'll be like, control F, control... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Stupid just... real life. Yes, can't I just Google for that in my <laughs> notes? <laughs> Cite notes. Uh, find receipt. But yeah, for, for me, anyways, yeah, uh, like I said, Fallout, the New Vegas, which I recently just got, and basically, it's one of those games where you're like, you're, it's like, Early in the morning, it's like one o'clock. You know, you've got school tomorrow, and you just you, but you you gotta go a little further. You gotta get you got you ha, you have to go you have to get to New Vegas. You know, you just look at your watch and say five more minutes for the next couple of hours, <laughs> and then it basically got to a point where eventually like I did, had to go up and get to school, and then um like I was really hungry, and then for a moment like in the lower left corner of like my eye, I swear to God, I saw like the little health bar which is really low. <laughs> Not not a great moment, and that, that I stopped playing for about a week. <laughs> Yikes! Yeah, I know. It's just, uh, hmm. trying to think of another one for me. I don't. Know, I, I, know, I feel I, like I, it's been a while since I've actually gotten like really immersed in a game, or like like really into a game. Even hmm. Hmm. I don't know why. Maybe I'm playing the wrong games. <laughs> Although that does segue nicely into your other topic. Yeah, well, let's jump into that. Uh, what, what games is ever? What games are everyone playing right now? I've been playing Oblivion again to bring up the topic I said a few minutes ago. Uh, just because I didn't get some achievements and Microsoft deleted my save game. Oh. After I was about 250 hours into it. Oh. So I wanted to get those achievements again, so I'm playing it through again before Skyrim, <laughs> which would give me just enough time. And that will be the only game you play until then. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was I was gonna say if you've got you you've got it for the Xbox I'm assuming or Xbox yeah. 360. Yeah, I was gonna say because on, on the PC there's a lot of just modifications for Oblivion and Fallout and New Vegas that just completely changed the game entirely. And it I had I uh, had a, I had it on the PC at one point. And the only mod I actually had was one that turns 
Wait, was it that? No, oh, wait, maybe I'm thinking of some other game, but I think it was something where it turns your flash... No, you don't have a flashlight in that, but it turns it into Hello Kitty. I actually think it was Doom 3, now that I think of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I don't know, what I'm playing right now is, um... I'm playing kind of an old game. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Um, Def Jam Fight for New York for the P- for the PS2. I played that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course you have, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> you can do uh, Flavor Flav versus Henry Rollins. Yeah. I don't even know why Henry Rollins is there, but it's pretty awesome. No, you have like Danny Trejo beat up Buster yeah. Ryan. It's hilarious. That game is kind of awesome. I actually played through the whole story mode and everything, and. When I was done, I was I just thought to myself, why did I do that? <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> well, you know what the weird part is? The game's actually good. Like, it's actually a really decent fighting game. I wouldn't call it a masterpiece, but it was. it's not as bad as one would think. Yeah, it's actually not too bad. Like, it's, it's kind of like a weird mix between, like, a wrestling game... Where like you have to do special moves and then and then and like it's just an odd fighting game, but it's it's not that bad and it's pretty customizable. Yeah. So and even if the gameplay rubs you the wrong way, the ridiculousness will keep you coming back. Yeah, I know. It's it's you, when, when you when you've seen like like um, Snoop Dogg like do backflips off a wall and did you kick <laughs> you in the face? You you've 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 officially played too many video games. <laughs> just, wow. It is pretty great as far as ridiculousness goes. Yeah. Well, uh, right now I'm playing, like I mentioned before, I'm uh, wrapping up New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Um, still waiting for Little Big Planet 2 to come in the mail. Looking oh, I got that. that. Oh, I, I haven't wait. really started yet. My wife is playing it more, but it's it's, it's co-op, fun. man. What are you doing? I'm playing Oblivion. Oh, oh. <laughs> like the whole reason I want to play. Little she Big plays Planet it while I'm at work. The co-op. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, I am currently playing the PlayStation 2 Classic. Lifeline. <laughs> I have always oh. wanted to play that ever since I saw it on an episode of Broken Pickle Pixels. Yeah, <laughs> you, you should play it, Christian. You should play it. I really I, want I would. To. You, you might be the only person I would ever recommend that game to, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm like getting through. I'm, I'm like what, a third of the way through the game right now. I'm like just getting through this game by sheer force of will at this point. Like I will. I'm not going to let this game defeat me. I will not let this game crush my soul like it wants to. Um. For anyone who isn't familiar with the game, Lifeline is, uh, I guess, kind of a survival horror game, but uh, its its big thing is that it's entirely voice-controlled. You play in uh, this kind of space hotel that's being attacked by aliens. <laughs> uh, you're, you're in this uh, security control room, and you're kind of following around this waitress who's who's running around trying to find your girlfriend and a reporter who knows something about the aliens. And the entire game is you just shouting commands at her and, and hoping she does them. Uh, you know, I've, I've noticed when you say plot lines to video games and anime out loud, it just sounds ridiculous. And you're like, what was I doing? Space hotel. Space you're hotel. in a space hotel and you're yelling commands at a waitress. And... Space super eight. <laughs> it, it seems like it would actually be like a very, very interesting and, and cool game. With the only hitch being that it's it's one thing that it does doesn't really work. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the voice commands th- are just not. They just work like sixty. I said 70%, go left. Which is well, a how problem. Can you get... Like it, it would still it would still be easy to deal with if it weren't there. There's just so many opportunities for your character to get killed in this game. Like if it was just like a normal adventure game, it would be a lot easier to deal with. But there's all this combat, and uh, you'll say okay. Dodge left, you're about to get hit, and she'll be like, run forward? Okay. And she'll be like, <laughs> shoot, shoot. And she'll be like, use a health kit? Okay. When she's at full health, and it's, <laughs> it's kind of frustrating. Does it work better than Seaman? <laughs> uh, the one time I tried Seaman, I couldn't get him to do anything, so. <laughs> I couldn't do yes. anything with that game. It I also think works one time... a little better than the voice-activated part of uh, Mario Party 7. <laughs> I think one time I got really frustrated with Seaman, and I just just started belting out cuss words, and he was like, "Hey, right back at you, buddy." <laughs> so that's the only thing he ever understood. Actually, <laughs> when I was doing the, the voice activated part in Mario Party, it's like there's this uh, trivia game where they ask questions, and you actually just say the answers into the microphone. Mm-hmm. And uh, my friend just kind of went off on on the host of the game, swearing up a storm, and, and he got it right. He got the answer right. 
<laughs> oh, voice software. So, yeah, Lifeline is the virtually the only game I'm playing right now, and it's really depressing. <laughs> See, I think uh, what Lifeline sounds like is, uh, you know, people will yell at horror movies like, no, he's behind the door! <laughs> And it sounds like someone got really drunk and was like, oh, man. That would be a great game. Happy awesome game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what it's like. But I am I am determined to see to see my way through this game. Like, the story is actually mildly interesting. There's there's some kind of conspiracy that I'm unraveling, and I, I kind of want to see how it unravels. It's just a matter of whether I can tell her to do that, I guess. <laughs> uh what else? Jetty, Jetty, what are you playing now? Oh, uh, actually, I'm going to use this to sort of segue into my part of the uh, podcast, my topic. Okay. Uh, I've been playing a variety of indie games lately. Ooh. Uh, recently, well, I don't know how recently it was anymore. They or was it? Somebody posted Panda Land on Game. Oh Call yeah, on? Matt Jonas reviewed that. I think uh, like a month ago, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, like, it was an incredibly short game, and, uh, you know, very, very simple, but it was sort of, uh, I don't know, I was sort of inspired because the the style of the graphics and stuff were a little different than what most indie games go for, I think. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. But then, uh, after playing that, I went back and I played Tower of Heaven again, and then I was playing, uh, The Underside and A Game with a Kitty, if any of you guys have ever played any of those games. I play Tower of Heaven. That was a good one. I do like that. But, uh, nobody plays indie games. I do, I do. I just, I haven't played any of the ones you've mentioned. <laughs> Is this true? I don't know, well, I guess I'm more into, like, not really Flash games and stuff so much, as, a uh, retro-styled, sort of, uh, console-esque games. So... You haven't played uh, Cthulhu Saves the World, have you? Uh, I have not. Because that looks kind of cool. It's a, like a 16-bit RPG where you play as Cthulhu. Interesting. Looks fun. It's on, it's on Xbox Live Indie Games. I think they are working to put it on the computer. I don't know if they have yet, though. Yeah, I was going to say is that I do not own an yeah. Xbox. I don't even own an original Xbox. Anyway. But yes, I am very... I am a... Uh, a programmer by day, and uh, I like to do some programming myself, and so perhaps programming a game would be cool, but uh, I tend to be less interested in Flash, so I'm not really interested in making a Flash game, which sort of uh, limits me, I think, in actually getting a game out to the public. Because uh, do people actually play video games anymore? No, nobody. Like, no, yeah, it's just... I, I thought we were sometimes. talking about cats. <laughs> well, like, uh, the concept of actually having a game that you load on your computer, I don't know, it seems that uh, consoles are the way to go anymore. Well, I, I disagree, actually. Steam, definitely Steam and Impulse and Director Drive, like, PC gaming's really coming back. Like, I, I personally, like, I play, a, I play AGS games all the time, and I know a bunch of people who... Like adventure game, studio games. Um, I was actually I was actually going to bring that up too. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh go ahead though. <laughs> but anyways, I'm just saying. Um, yeah, it's PC gaming still around. It's just kind of taking a different form. Yeah, I guess that's sort of my deal. Is that like, you know, you don't go to the store and buy a CD so much anymore. Like. Yeah. It it's it mostly seems to be moving towards browser games or game collection things where you're like in a program that gives you a list of games, oh, well, you can download it and then play it through their thing. Like... Yeah, like downloadable, direct-to-drive, and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Steam-type things, yeah. Exactly. And, uh, I don't know, I'm more into old things. Like, I would uh, I would sell my game on a uh, floppy disk if I could. <laughs> well, I mean, if you did want to make a game, I, like like Justin just brought up, I would I would recommend using the Adventure Game Studio. That's what Lizzo and I have been using to make Test Game, and it's fairly straightforward. We'll see, but that's the thing also. Like, 
I, uh... If you wanted to make an adventure game, anyway. <laughs> yeah, anything else is kind of really hard to... Yeah. <laughs> me and my friend tried, it was... <laughs> Not recommended if you wanted to make a racing game. No. You know Not me, too I hard to use, games. though. Not too hard to use. Even I I made a, a short game once with it. Oh, wow. Hmm. Oh, but see, my deal is, as a programmer, I can code my own. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Yeah. See, I, I'm just speaking as the schlub that knows nothing about programming. Yeah, same here. <laughs> been hell, and, hell, uh, I, who indeed failed out of game design classes? Uh, like hell, I'm using I'm using like I was using Game Maker Eight for a while, so I'm like super beginner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean my my holdback is always that uh, I am relatively poor at making graphics, and I am absolutely terrible at making music. But, uh, you know, perhaps I could get it together with uh, Mateo and Grab I was just going to say, we, we have something. people on the game called the staff who could probably work together with you on something. We're a wealth of talent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it might be cool. But uh, as of late, I have been incredibly busy, and as such, I was uh, just going and playing other people's games. I'm very disappointed in myself. Oh. Aww. I was, uh, was going to actually mention... Sorry, I interrupt you. I keep doing that. Oh, no, no. Um... Any game, any game I played recently, it's pretty popular now. Um, Amnesia: The Dark Descent. I've I've heard of it, but I haven't played it yet. I've heard it's good. I've heard it's like a creepy game. I've been wanting to play it, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Yeah, it's you know, basic, Oblivion. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically the. I'd say it's probably the scariest game to come out in recent years, anyways. Because like, 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 don't get me wrong. I do like Dead Space, but Dead Space is just startles you. It doesn't really fill you with dread mm-hmm. not like amnesia does because like for the first 10 minutes of playing it you don't see a monster like you see doors blow open and like shadows and whatnot and stuff that creeps you up but you don't actually see anything that poses a threat until this moment where you get to the cellar and then a monster finally appears and at that point you are screaming at the top of your lungs trying to get away clamoring for life and it's just it's 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 really it really is a very scary game. Don't don't play it in the dark because you will lose your mind. Yikes. Mm-hmm. I like my mind. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, most of my indie gaming tends to take place on Xbox Live indie games, just because I I read a column for it for the site. Uh, mm-hmm. So I mean, I really liked. Uh, I've talked about this a billion times on the site by now. A game called Excru- Excruciating Guitar uh, Voyage. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just this wonderful, wonderful combination of point-and-click adventure games, of course, because those are the only things I play, and uh, platformers. Uh, and it's also really funny and weird, and then there's singing involved in, a, in a more than one location. So, I I enjoy that. <laughs> uh, I also, another indie game I played recently is uh, Epic Dungeon, for, also for Xbox Live Indie Games. It's basically uh, one of those roguelike kind of games where you just go down floor after floor after floor, picking up better equipment and hitting stuff and trying not to die. That's fun. But not not a yes. lot of PC uh, indie games. Well, see, I guess uh, that's a question I could pose to all of you, is uh, once again, like, what are your thoughts on, like, Flash games or browser games? They seem to be becoming popular. And actually, I've seen a number of, like, larger companies starting to make browser games. It's actually becoming like a real medium. And the casual casual browser type games are certainly money makers. Certainly, people are interested in them. I don't know if there are any any uh, replacement for PC or console like full games. Yeah. But it's certainly uh, it's certainly something people are interested in. I've I've played a good handful. They're uh, they're fun when you when you don't want to get into a full full game you just want to play something really quick it's not a bad not a bad option i've noticed that uh facebook games have been getting a little more advanced lately like the first time i played a facebook game was like three or four years ago and it was basically like playing a website like <laughs> I yeah. play, and then it, it takes me to the next screen and like oh this is what you did and then i click somewhere else and it's like oh this is what you did this time but now there's like <laughs> actual animation and controls and stuff they've well they've gotten to the point where it's like a flash game basically but I'm recalling uh, Mr. Face. <laughs> wow, that's old school. Talk about it. Uh, Mr. Face. 
uh, was it was a game featured in, in Game Cola's very first issue back when we still had our monthly issue format. Uh, it's just a stupid little game that Game Cola writer Matt Gardner made in his uh, <laughs> class. Actually, no, I'm sorry. That's Mr. Face Advance I'm talking about. There was even one <laughs> before Mr. Face, Ooh. which is actually very much like the old school Facebook games where uh, this, this, this is something I created myself when I was like 15 years old, where uh, there was a big screen. On, on, there was like a website, and there was a picture of a smiley face, and then you click, and it takes you to a next page where Mr. Face has been shot in in his face. <laughs> and then if you click again, it takes you to another screen where he's been shot again. But he isn't really shot where you uh, clicked. It's just where I happened to draw the little bullet hole. It was a good so game. it's like it's like Faceball 2000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But then Matt, yes. Matt Gardner later made a sequel to that in Visual Basic where Mr. Face actually bounces around on the screen and you have to click him a bunch of times to kill him. Wow, Visual <laughs> Basic. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, good old Mr. Face. Yeah. Were, you, were you surprised that I remembered that? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> yes, I do recall Mr. Face. Wonderful. Anyway. But, uh, yeah, because... I don't know, I remember, you know, Neopets and stuff like that back in the days when browser games were, like, coming out. Uh, and I remember Java games used to be popular, if anybody remembers Java. Hmm. The little Java applets. I love yeah. coffee. <laughs> I like love little... small island nations. <laughs> I, may say, I mostly know Java because every day it tells me to update and yes, I keep true. telling it, no, no, Java. Last time I updated, you broke my, my the system that I used to log in uh, to, for, my, for work. And then I couldn't log into my, my work anymore, and I, and I couldn't do work. And it was yes. very upsetting. So I'm not updating you anymore. Yeah, that's kind of like Adobe. Adobe updates all the time. Broke and everything. Uh, I couldn't log into the company website anymore. Yikes. Yeah, my Adobe does that too. And I have to keep telling it, stop doing that because you're going to find out I didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I just always hate when a uh, Adobe Reader updates and it puts that icon back on your desktop. I didn't want you there in the first place. Yeah, yeah. I deleted like, I never, it for a reason. I yeah. never use you, and you're requiring me to restart my computer, and you're putting an icon back on my desktop. Yeah, so I don't like it when anything puts an icon on my desktop. I just delete them all like right away. Yeah, I have recycling yeah. bin in my computer and like my documents, and that's it. Yes. Ideally, that's what mine would look like, but it's usually a cluttered mess of crap. Yeah. When I download something, I just think, yeah, I'll just put it on the desktop for now. Every time. <laughs> but I think we've, we've started to derail this topic slightly. Yes, I was Maybe. talking about... Uh, we were talking about games. desktops. We'll see. Okay. Uh, I personally like Java. I like programming in Java. It's pretty cool. I don't like so much programming in Flash. See, I guess... I have an issue with Flash's graphics being that they're vector graphics. Like, it's a lot of smooth curves and stuff, and I uh, I have pixels in my heart. It's actually quite painful. I have to get it checked out once a month. Uh, but, you know, I like square things. I like blocks that don't rotate. Thank you. Uh, I do not like anti-aliasing, so I'm not a big fan of Flash. But I don't know if anybody actually would know what was going on if a Java applet began loading. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm not up to date, but I thought Java was pretty much still around. Well, I think it's maybe still not. around, but it's, uh, like Paul said, it's used more for like, oh, I use it to go to work, or I use yeah. it, uh, I don't know. For business I, type applications, not so much games. Yeah, like I think, I don't know, because I, I feel like, there is a, uh, a niche market for it because smartphones and stuff, a lot of them don't support Flash, but they do support Java. So if I wanted to uh, go super casual games, targeting smartphones and stuff, I could get out using Java. Maybe that's a that's a maybe a train of thought worth exploring. Yeah. But also, by the time that I would produce a game, probably Flash would be supported. And uh, oh boy. But hopefully Java still would be, too. Yeah. I guess I'm just not a fan of good graphics. <laughs> Stupid graphical progress. I yeah. hate you. <laughs> Improvement. 
if I could just have like one giant square of one color. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a game. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say we move on to the next topic now. Yes. Uh, right. Christian, do you have something else for us? No, I only had one. Oh. Okay, I I, actually, I have another one. Uh, we talked earlier about uh, games that we're looking forward to in 2011. Uh, I want to take that back a step. Uh, a month or so ago, we released Game Cola's top games of uh, 2010, and I thought we should we could talk a little about uh, what our personal games of the year were for 2010. Ooh. So, Jetty, what what was yours? What's your game of the year for 2010? What was, did I vote for a game of the year? I don't know. Did you? I don't think I did. <laughs> I think you voted for games for some categories. I did, but I'm trying to remember what I even voted for. <laughs> uh, oh, there was asks, some indie game you voted for. Yeah, I think uh, I think I did vote for Tower of Heaven, or I might have voted for V V V V V V. That was it. Yeah, the the V one. Yes, mm-hmm. six V's. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. V V V V V V. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, yes, I voted oh. for Tower of Heaven. So there. Ha. Huh. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I remember because uh, I was going to vote, but then I, for some reason, the email got lost somewhere, and then just I don't know what happened. But <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't really think this topic and <laughs> think through this topic. I forgot that half the people in this podcast didn't actually really vote for that much. I wanted to. I remember. I remember. Then I remember you emailing it. Where it's like, yeah. yeah, this is your last time. And I was like, wait, but I thought I already said it. <laughs> Oh. oh. Did you vote for something, Christian? I half-heartedly <laughs> voted for Mass Effect 2 because there was nothing okay. really great last year. Yeah. I uh, like Mass Effect 2, but that's really... Mm. I, uh, I voted for an in, 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 independent adventure game called The Whispered World, which I'm, I'm shocked didn't win. <laughs> I guess no one else played it. No, I've never heard of it, actually. Wonderful comedic adventure game, uh, 2D, point-and-click, very, very old school. Um, the developers are German, I think? Uh, it just recently got translated and released here. Uh, it stars a clown, a sad clown, depressed clown, uh, who has to save the world. But it's it's just a really, really funny game, really charming, really beautiful. Just a, just a really a total package adventure game. With the only the only uh, thing I could say bad about it was that, uh, like with many adventure games, a lot of the puzzles didn't really make any sense, and I had to look up the answers. But um, I was having so much fun playing through the game anyway that I didn't really even see that as as a detriment. Instead of me getting frustrated because I couldn't solve a stupid puzzle, it was more like, uh, okay, I've spent five seconds on this. Now I'm going to look it up because I want to see what happens next. No, I'm looking at pictures of this game. From the pictures, it looks very nice. It looks like a good game. It is. I mean, it's just a very happy, pleasant, fun game. I would, I would recommend it to anyone. It looks like the uh, Freddy Fish style of game, where there's kind of animation over a drawn background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like cartoon style animation. Yeah, but it's it's not it's not a kids game. Well, I mean, I guess it can be played by kids, but I don't think it's intended for children. Yeah. Put it that way. It's not explicitly for kids. Yeah, and. I mean, another thing I really liked about it, I've, I've played a lot of adventure games that have come from other countries, and the translations are usually god awful. <laughs> they just like I had ran into that problem with uh, Runaway. Um, There's this other stupid game that like the translation was so bad that like like the, they would just like randomly have capital letters and random punctuation marks in the text. Like it was just, but um, the translation, the localization here was just really strong. Like. It wouldn't occur to you that that it was made in a, in a different language originally, so I thought that was really cool. Anyway, that was my game of the year. Um, I don't think anyone else voted for it. I think I think Lizzo might have voted for it for uh, second or third place for game of the year uh, because we played through it together. But we're probably the only people on, on Game Call who actually did play the game. Um, I'm I'm surprised Heavy Rain won our game of the year. Cause <laughs> I was too. I'm just, it was. You know. It was really close. Like, if one person, for example, Justin had voted, <laughs> Heavy Rain probably would not have won. <laughs> yeah, so maybe sure. this is that classic situation where if you didn't vote, you can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, uh, well, in brief, the way our voting system works is I ask everyone to rank their top three choices, and when I'm calculating the votes, uh, first place gets five points, second three, and third place one, and then um, 
Heavy Rain won by one point. Ooh. Who, who was, was the second? runner up? Um, I believe it was well, Red Dead. Oh, I see. I think it was Red Dead Red and Mass Dead, Effect. Yeah. We're both right behind it, but I can I can double check that. It was Red Dead and Fallout New Vegas. There we go. So. I don't know. My my game of the year probably probably would go to Red Dead Redemption just because of the the way the, the way the story was just was just handled how it progressed. It just up uh, everything up until and after like the Mexico area was just it was it was really fun. It really really just it, that's the one reason you keep playing the game just see what happens next with John Marston. So I quit halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the game. I, I really did. I think it was a really great game, but. It's the same game Rockstar has been putting out for the past ten years, and I don't but, know. But I'm just I'm kind of tired. Time. It's cowboys. <laughs> this time, and if you buy an upgrade, zombies. <laughs> of course, yeah. it's zombies. Of course. Yeah. And I'm That's... I'm so tired of zombies too. I and this yeah. is coming from the Manchester, New Hampshire leader of the zombie attack. <laughs> I I run the zombie walk in the city, wait, wait, and I am wait, tired wait, of wait. zombies. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Please tell me what that is. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of cities have uh, zombie walks where everyone just randomly at some day of the year dresses up like a zombie and just walks through the streets. Yes. Wow. And so that that awesome. happens here in Manchester, New Hampshire. It's actually a secret that I'm the uh, the leader of it, but I don't, I don't think anyone listens. <laughs> anyone that is part of that listens to this, so it's okay. Yes, anyone that listens is part of this. Like we have a lot of we have, we do have a lot of listeners in general, right? I caught you. <laughs> Your secret is out, Christian. No, oh, no. Uh, okay, so that was everyone's game of the year. Uh, who else? Who else still has a topic? No, I brought. I brought. No, I, I don't. Not really. I don't really have any. 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 Any news? Anybody wants to talk about? I suppose any gaming news. Well, uh, the the price for the 3DS was just announced uh, last a couple weeks ago. Does anyone care about that? I actually had that on my list of things to maybe talk about. It was uh, released uh, that it's going to cost $250, which is uh, a lot more than their other portables have cost at launch, at least. Almost twice as much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not the most expensive portable, because I think in the 90s there were a bunch that were like super, super expensive, and nobody bought them, and they failed completely. But... So yeah, what, what do you guys think about this price? I I think it's way I, I think it's way too much considering it's just its main selling point is three dimensional graphics, which is basically just a visual trick. It's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. Yeah, like it's it's not even it's not even a I'm probably gonna get hate for this, but it's not even a really effective gimmick because all it does is trick your eyes into thinking it's a three dimensional image. You can't interact with a three dimensional mm. image. You only can mm-hmm. see it. So. It's a pri- and, it, and it costs more than the Wii does now, I think. Because I think the Wii's yeah. down to 200 right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So. I think uh, it's too expensive for me. I wouldn't pay that much. But I think for a lot of people it won't be. Just because right now we're in a market where people will ba- pay like $300 for their iPhone. And then someone will come up with a really big, cumbersome iPhone. And they'll be like, I'll pay twice as much. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't know where people are paying six and seven hundred dollars for like iPads and stuff. Just these silly things they can play with. Two hundred and fifty dollars might not be that bad. Yeah. To them, not to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that—that's Apple. App, well, Apple has that's a, true. Apple has a religious following. I mean, Nintendo. I mean, Nintendo's a big following, but I don't know if they can push that. That's true. That's like outside. saying Scientologists are more than happy to put all their money into the collection plate at the Church of Scientology. Mm-hmm. It's because you're talking about one cult. Yeah. I also think it's a little surprising because I think Nintendo's usually a little more reasonable about their prices than that. Like, the Wii was only two two fifty at launch, which, I mean, it, it sounds like a lot to people who don't play video games, I guess. But, mm-hmm. I mean, compared to the PS3, which was like $600 at launch, I mean, I'm just surprised that they would charge that much. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think one of, the, one of the rationale I've heard was that it's it's a lot, but with all those features you get with the 3DS, it really makes it worthwhile. Um, yeah. But the problem I have with that is, okay, where's my cheaper version that doesn't have all those features that I don't want then? You know, like, I, I could give a crap about the pedometer, for example. There's a pedometer built in? There's a pedometer. I mean... That's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't walk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just... 
I would I would I would be okay paying less for one that just played video games, perhaps. Yeah. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. I guess you just keep the old one. Yeah. And you never play the 3D. Yeah. Tisk tisk. Then I'll never get to play Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. Oh yeah, that is going to be 3D yeah. only, isn't oh. it? That's actually the only the only game that's really on my radar for the uh. 3DS right now. <laughs> But that's just because I have really weird taste. That's not necessarily indicative of, of a poor uh, launch lineup. They did no, that not... on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna lie, Phoenix Wright versus Professor Layton. Probably gonna, I'd probably buy a 3DS for that. <laughs> See, I'm a exactly. big fan of Layton. Yeah. See, what I'm gonna do is, if I can, if I can talk my fiance into this, I want to put it on our wedding registry. What? 3DS. Wow. I tried very hard to talk my wife into letting me put video games and stuff on the registry. She wasn't she wasn't too keen yeah. on it. Oh. Aww. I'm going I'm to push for it. But in, I think in retrospect, she regretted it because we could have had a lot of awesome games. Okay, she just said no. <laughs> so I was wrong. Yeah. Well, see, you'll put 3DS on the, uh, on the registry and then your grandmother will get you a 3DO. <laughs> cool. I hope not. That would be much more difficult to find. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't obviously wouldn't expect just one person to spend two hundred and fifty dollars on that for me. But you know, maybe people could go together on it. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a thought. I I cannot see myself just spending two fifty out of pocket for it though. Yeah. Especially especially with Nintendo's history of you know a year later releasing a much better two. version, yeah. which is cheaper. You know, I've gotten I've gotten screwed over so many times because of that. I'm kind of sick of it. Yeah, I know. Next year they're gonna have the 3DS2 where you get sucked into the game and it's actually like Nick <laughs> Arcade. <laughs> so lost. Captain N. <laughs> yes. Nick Arcade. The kids were always so bad at that game. Because it was impossible. You were just standing in front of a blue screen. <laughs> yeah, and you had to like jump and like try to skateboard and stuff. These kids were bad on all the Nickelodeon game shows, though. Yeah, that's Legend true. Legends of the Hidden Temple. Oh, yeah. So frustrating. Watching from home. No, you don't put the head on top of the base of the silver monkey. What's wrong <laughs> with you? Stupid. I always <laughs> thought that that show was unfair. This is a game, by the way. So this is still on topic. We're talking about games. <laughs> I always thought that show was unfair, though, because if they didn't feel like giving out a prize that day, they would just put temple guards in the rooms you have to go to. <laughs> and they would do that. They'd be like, you have to go to this room. Oh, temple guards, sorry. But if you had the amulet. But there's only, but you have to go to so many rooms. You have to go to like three rooms. You have to have a amulet too, because sometimes you only have half an amulet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway. I am so um, lost right now. <laughs> Not even other, other video game news. Um, the, the PSP2 was announced last week. What? Oh yeah. Or whatever it's called, the NGP. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like next generation for. portable. Oh, That's good job. I don't know yeah. what's real different about it or anything. I know it's it again is big and bulky. NGP isn't that the Neo Geo Pocket? That's all I think when I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has some it has some cool stuff. Uh, it has it has motion controls because everything has to have those. How now. is that possible? Well, like a... you you like tilt the 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 system to do stuff, I guess. Okay, I was going to say, like, do you screen anymore? No. <laughs> you wave it around like a magic wand. <laughs> but does no, it... It, has that. It, has a, it has a touch screen. It has, like, a touch-sensitive pad on the back of the system, too. Does it forcefully eject the CD? It doesn't have CDs. What? No, it, it, they're going back to, like, cartridges for this thing. Oh, because they're, actually, so they're using a physical medium again? Yeah, yeah, like little uh, memory cards, I think they're referring to them, but... I, I, I'm not sure what the difference between a memory card and DS cartridge is, to be honest. <laughs> Probably nothing. No. They got that. Uh, they also have multiple cameras on the front and the back of the system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, a GP, uh, some sort of GPS thing inside. Uh, Maybe they'll make like <laughs> augmented reality games, ones that are actually cool. I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah. I do. Was... I do like the concept of those, but I don't like the reality of walking into streetlights and stuff and not, well, not watching where you're going. <laughs> I mean, it's cool that they'll be able to, to do stuff like that without you having to buy a separate camera to plug into the system, because it'll just have it right there. Anyway, so that's 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 coming out at some point. That's coming out in Japan at the end of the year, I think. Doesn't sound like a match for the Game Boy camera, though. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have one of those. <laughs> I do somewhere in my basement. <laughs> do you have the Game Boy printer, too? Yeah. 
that lost <laughs> foot of, of course, the camera's worthless without it. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, it's of arguable value. But, uh, personally, I was a little bummed out about the announcement because I just bought my PSP, like, last month. <laughs> So I, sh- I probably should have seen this coming because as soon as I as soon as I get something like that, they announce the new one right after it. <laughs> Happened with the DS too, I think. Jerks. So yeah, I don't I don't know if they have any really like super exciting games lined up yet. Uh, Killzone, Uncharted, Call of Duty, basically like PSP versions of all the big PS3 titles, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. That was the big news last week. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm going to actually say that it's it's about to, uh, time to start wrapping this up. It's been quite a podcast. Before we get going, uh, I have a few housekeeping things to take care of. Housekeeping, I believe, is the official podcast terminology that people use for this stuff. <laughs> I don't know why, but it, like every podcast I listen to, they always refer to what I'm about to talk about as housekeeping, so I'm going to go with it. Um, Jetty, I want you to tell me if people have any comments about this show, about how much they love us or things they want to talk about, um, but not comments about how much they dislike us, because I don't really want to hear that, uh, how, can they, how can they get in touch with us? They can email us at podcast at gamecola.net, or they can comment on the article on the website. Alternatively, if we uh, post this on YouTube again, which I imagine that we will since it's been so amazingly successful... They can comment on the YouTube video. They can also like us on Facebook, and they can subscribe on iTunes. So go like, subscribe, and be our video game pals. Absolutely, and also if you're listening on iTunes, uh, rate us really, really high. Because Please. Because become famous. We, we have right now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you right now, we have one review on iTunes. We've had it for about a year and a half. <laughs> Is it from and Michael And it was by a Game Cola writer. <laughs> yes. So. Do you have to download iTunes to make a review? Because I will. And I'll make a different name, too, so we can pretend it's someone else. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. don't know. You might be able to do it on iTunes' website. I'll try it. But you probably have to have an iTunes account. And Lame. Then, uh, <laughs> right, so we got that. Twitter, did anyone mention Twitter yet? I did not. We also have a Twitter account, at GameCola. Facebook, uh, YouTube. Oh, if you want to visit our YouTube page, uh, it's just gc.net. The letter's gc and then the word's dot net. Uh, you might be already there listening to the podcast, but if you're not, you can go there, see some various videos that we've made, lots of video playthroughs of Phoenix Wright games, uh, Willie Beamish playthrough upcoming. It's going to be great. Uh, okay, actually, I, I think... Oh, and if you want to visit the actual Game Cola website, Whoa. if you're not doing that already... Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're not listening to this on the Game Cola website, uh, we have one, GameCola.net. We have hilarious video game reviews, columns... Uh, some comics every every now and then. Lots of fun stuff. So check us out, GameCola.net. And I guess that's about it. Anyone have any final any final words for podcast number thirty four? No. Remember, everybody, if the women don't find you handsome, they'll at least find you handy. Nobody got that. That's our nope. hate. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Nobody here's here's Canadian, so I'm not surprised. I'm very close to the Canadian border, but no. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard it before, but I don't know where it comes from. Uh, Red Green Show, but uh, oh, my that dad watches sense. that. Yeah, it's a very old show. Mine. It's on it's on PBS here, but no. exactly. I, um, I, I I can't say I've seen it enough to really get get references to it, other than. Duct tape. Well, my my old boss used to say that regularly, and he was Canadian. So, ah. happy Canada Day! Happy Canada Day! <laughs> In about a couple months. <laughs> yeah, it's the first of July because they had to be before the fourth of July. Yeah, they so think we're so fancy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Always above us. Also, I wanted to know, like, where are you guys? Like, where are you guys from the United States? Like, just out of just out of curiosity, like, is it Eastern, like, where? Oh, I think we're all everyone who's in this podcast is from Eastern. Yeah, yeah. I'm in Florida. Florida, I'm up in New Hampshire. Hampshire. I'm I'm in Connecticut though. I'm originally from South Jersey. Yeah, so we're all on the East Coast, but um, in Game Cola in general, people are from all over. Mm. So they didn't have Legends of the Hidden Temple in Canada. 
Well, they don't have Nickelodeon no, I've never, up there. I've, no, I've never, I've never heard of that show. They don't have Nickelodeon? They don't have Nickelodeon well, up there. They must by well, well, Justin might be just the wrong age, too. Yeah, that, he's yeah. He's years younger than the rest of us, I think, right, Justin? Yeah, I'm like... I'm like you're, you're college-aged. Yeah, I'm like you're 19. Oh. Uh, uh, Plus, you yeah. might have missed it. <laughs> Plus, we did get we did get like a Nickelodeon, but it was it was on Tit Cable, but it moved around so much up here in Canada that you never really knew which station it was on. <laughs> it's almost like a guerrilla network where it just kept switching every, <laughs> every like two months, and you had to just spend an hour searching for it. But <laughs> yes. when I was little, like when I wasn't playing video games, I was watching Nickelodeon. That was pretty much it. Yeah. That was my life for like five years. Did you have Nickelodeon Games and Sports when it was around? That channel. Uh, I, I I didn't. I watched it at my brother's house though, and I got really excited because I could watch Guts. Oh, yeah, Guts. Yeah. You could even watch the old ones, like before they really knew how to make game shows. There, like Make the Grade <laughs> and Think Fast. Wild and Crazy Kids. I loved Wild and Crazy Kids. Yes. Yeah, Nick Arcade. And then I watched it again. And I wondered why. <laughs> Fam- family Double Dare. <laughs> Nick Arcade was awesome though, because they'd just flail around in front of a blue screen. Wait, wait, Jetty, they were like, they recorded this stuff in Florida. How come you were never on one of them? Actually, uh, okay, that was before I moved to Florida. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I was like 10 when I moved to Florida, and that was like right when Nickelodeon was kind of heading out. Uh, and now it's not even there anymore. It's so de- depressing. Yeah, yeah I heard all that. Yeah. But, uh, no, I did, like, I was never on the show, actually, but I was in the crowd a couple times. Really? Uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting because, uh, like, you never really realize what goes on behind the scenes, and some girl was, like, showing off how her bird could do tricks, but it kept, like, not doing them. Was that on Figure It Out? <laughs> so, I don't remember what the show was anymore, like, I really <laughs> don't, and, uh... That does sound like Figure It yeah. Out, actually, <laughs> And, uh. With Summer Sanders. Sorry, go ahead. But yeah, uh, I just remember being kind of surprised that they gave it, like, multiple takes, because I always thought that it was, you know, straight through and they did it once. <laughs> but then again, I was, like, you know, 10 at the time, so. <laughs> oh. I think my, Your one of my biggest just... regrets in life is when I was at Nickelodeon Studios a few years ago before they closed it down. Yeah. When they were filming for Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. <laughs> and. <laughs> I I was just waiting there while I was waiting for my events, and I saw the scoreboard, the actual timer board that would hover above Mark Summers' head on Double Dare, <laughs> and probably my biggest regret in my life is just not saying screw it to the whole day and just taking that and running away, <laughs> just considering that my prize. <laughs> I would build a hat with, like... Rebar, so it's always above my head. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen to that time capsule, because uh, that area doesn't like exist anymore. So someday they're going to like build a building on top of the uh, Nickelodeon time capsule. <laughs> oh, there, oh yeah, there is a time capsule. Yeah, they're probably not even going to care and dig it up. <laughs> or it'll be they like should have, they should have at least left the slime geyser up. I know. <laughs> I know, it's right? So iconic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of uh, it was kind of sad to see it in person though, because it was just green water. Yeah, it wasn't oh. really even slimy or anything. <laughs> they like make that. it look so much more exciting on the show. Yeah, yeah. On the show too. it's just this watered down green water. And I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, "Oh, that's kind of a bummer." I could stick my head under it, and it would just look like I stuck my head in a fountain. Well, I, I was still highly impressed with it when I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what what they do, what they did with Stick Stickly. <laughs> He's just like in, a, in an arts and crafts drawer somewhere. somewhere in like a drawer there. I should have looked around the drawers. <laughs> so many missed oh. opportunities. I uh, know, and I was completely on. Uh, no one was watching me either because everyone was outside, oh. and I was just waiting in their little green room area, which happened to be an empty studio with all their props. Wow. Well, you just need to like start sort- searching uh, some Orlando area dumpsters. It's probably there. <laughs> <Yeah, go laughs> if I knew that they were packing it up, I would have. I would have started. A, I would have had a little weekend trip to Orlando and gone dumpster diving at Universal. <laughs> <laughs> I found Moe's jersey, her uh, her uniform. <laughs> then I'd bring it home and sniff it. <laughs> the, the the guy from from uh, Guts, he's on Glee now. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? That 
completely blew my mind when I, like, I didn't even, I, I've been watching it and I've seen him there a couple times. It, I didn't put two and two together and it just kind of blew my mind when I learned that that was him. Yeah. Like, I watched it once and I saw him on it. I was like, oh, maybe the show would be awesome. <laughs> it was, but... Hey, it's not that bad. <laughs> but Mike, but I was happy to see Mike O'Malley. Yeah. Good to see him getting work. Getting work. <laughs> Oh, did you see uh, Mark Summers hosted a new game show like like five or six years ago on the Game Show Network? Did he? What was yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, what was it? It was some kind of school-themed game show, I think, where like each round had questions of a different grade level. <laughs> I, might, I don't know. My wires might be closed in my head. I know that was a game show, and I know Mark Summers hosted a game show when that game show existed. It might have been the same thing. That was make la- the grade. didn't last very long, though. Yeah, that was make the grade where they had like fire drills and stuff. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't look like he was holding up too well, actually. <laughs> I think he's now just doing uh just doing uh like Food Network stuff. My friend oh, really? is his daughter's guitar teacher. There's a little random fact. Wow, wow. Hmm. Happy podcast, everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we can probably get going. Yeah, I'm gonna, I was gonna say yeah. I've gotta. I gotta get going. <laughs> Maybe we can put some Nickelodeon talk at the end of the podcast. 